Well, it's, it's part of the uncertainties that we consider when we invest in a particular sector. What are the regulatory uh, uncertainties or what's the regulatory environment? And this obviously uh, uh, puts a cloud on any investment thesis on either GLOBE or, or PLDT. But uh, if you look at what the, the telcos have done so far, it seems like they've actually gone on the assumption that this is a, an approved deal already and they've actually started rolling out uh, mm -hmm. uh, the cell sites. They've fired yeah. up their cell sites and they're using that to uh, ultimately improve the speed of, of internet. Uh -huh. and, and so that said, they're rolling it out and of course additional capex both announced by the two telcos. In order to roll this out, how do you think that will affect their bottom line like for the rest of the year? Well, I think it's within the program mm -hmm. uh, capital expenditures they've mentioned uh, uh, after the transaction happened. Um, it's, we actually think it's a way of, of improving their, their, their network at, at a low uh, capital expenditure, uh, mm -hmm. at a low cost. So it so, uh, should be okay for them. Okay, to sum it all up, are you still bullish on these two telcos? Well, we, we've, we've always been cautious on, on telecommunications, mm -hmm. Philippine telecommunications, uh, anchored on the fact that uh, competition mm -hmm. will continue to erode, or sorry, or uh, maybe limit mm -hmm. uh, the, EBIT, third player, EBIT the yeah. margin growth for, oh, the for, both, the margin growth. Okay. for both companies. Yeah. So, um, but it, where do you see Globe and Smart finishing the, the rest of the year? I mean, we still have another half, more or less. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to imagine them taking this sitting down. I mean, mm -hmm. if this was a prize fight, you could, you could say Globe has probably won the early rounds. They've been more adept at uh, generating more uh, data revenue per subscriber and in terms of increasing their subscriber base, hence their market share has, has crept up considerably. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's still early rounds. Uh, it would be interesting for PLDT uh, to see what PLDT has a, uh, as a counter punch, mm -hmm. so to speak, how, this, how they actually execute on what they call the, I think Quentin mentioned earlier, yeah. the, the digital, digital pivot. pivot. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay, so the stock market index, let's move there to a broader, sure. on a broader, more broad sense rather. Um, it has been flirting at 8-1. You were telling me, well, it's at 8-1 already. Um, off the sidelines earlier, I was like, but it's kind of not holding. Like just last week, it did close below 8,000 again. Where do you see the index at year end? Well, if, if I think the PLDT results were, were, uh, were uh, underwhelming, mm -hmm. uh, even, even given the adjusted expectations mm -hmm. of the market. Uh, a company with a big index weight like PLDT comes out with an uh, earnings result like that could weigh down on the markets. Mm -hmm. So that will put pressure on your, uh, on your, on index, uh, on your like, index, yeah. on the main index. But if you look at the early results, that have trickled in since I think yesterday or You're the day before. You're talking about different earnings reports that yes, we've been yes, getting. Yes, yes, yes. The all banks. Mostly really good, especially with the financial. The, the banks have surprised with faster than expected loan growth. And even net interest margins have actually crept up. So, so that was a bit of a surprise for us. And, and uh, it, we're not saying they're out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. There's still stiff competition in the banks. But that was encouraging uh, to see both BDO and the and, uh, and uh, BPI okay. report. So uh, what better drove than that? Earnings. What drove that um, huge, bigger than expectation earnings, in your opinion? Well, it's three things. It's like I mentioned earlier. It's it's loan growth, it's uh, improvement in uh, fee income, mm -hmm. and net interest margins. And also, there were some. I think for BPI, there were some trading gains that, that helped boost uh, income. All right. So uh, again, we are entering into ghost month. So just a little uh, trick question here. Sure. What stocks are you looking at? So traditionally th trades are very thin during this month right especially right. tomorrow was right. just the official start oh that's official. yeah so what's your strategy right. for the rest of the month the strategy is for the rest of the year okay or years not just for the for the rest of the mm -hmm. month we before we invest in a stock we actually look at we do a thorough analysis of the sector and we like cons we still like consumer uh, infrastructure and we think the byproduct of improved infrastructure is property so uh, you have your staples, Ayala Land, SM Prime, Metro Pacific, uh, alongside other core positions uh, we like. But maybe it's also time at this point, since everyone's run up, mm -hmm. to look at the underloved or deep value names. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in property, you have companies like Global Estate Resorts mm -hmm. Inc., which is trading... You're talking about Pasher stocks here. Yeah, what Call it like what you want, yeah. uh, Sean. But yeah. The underloved, undervalued stocks, uh, you also have uh, even the, the, the mining stocks. Uh, 
Nickel Asia, you talked about yeah. the nickel price earlier. Uh, you're, you could see a, you could be seeing a supply deficit. Philippines is is one of the uh, significant suppliers of nickel globally. Mm -hmm. uh, I think 27% yeah. last we checked. And uh, if you have all of these smaller nickel companies uh, not operating because they haven't been approved or they've been asked to yeah. cease temporarily, mm -hmm. You have Nickel Asia, whose plants are ISO certified, Massive, yeah. and they're ISO certified, so they've passed certain standards. Uh, that should mean continuity for them, mm -hmm. at the very least. So, but that said, uh, supply deficit is normally good for the commodity price, which is the nickel price. And you've seen, I think yes. you presented it earlier. Yes, we did see it. Nickel Asia uh, is up to yes. point. And if you look at the price of nickel, it's actually dropped massively from. Mm -hmm over the last couple of years. So. Okay, so you're bullish on nickel. Thank you very much for all the insights. Junta Bago from Atram.